With all 10 Master Set players released from the Style Icons event, it's time to do a tier list of those players. Now, because you do essentially get a 93 overall choice pack, which allows you to pick any of these cards by just completing the objectives, these are the rankings, in my opinion, if you are looking for the most competitive card to add the biggest advantage to your team. If you are someone who just likes to play the game with your favorite players, thank God there's more of you out there. And as always, pick players from your favorite team. This is merely just a guide for anyone looking for the most competitive advantage when it comes to these cards. Let's get into it. Let's begin in the F tier, and this one pains me. Obviously, goaltenders are always going to have very little value in comparison to forwards and defensemen because they just don't matter nearly as much in game. That said, I think the card art is fantastic, but this card specifically highlights a bigger problem that's happening when it comes to the content release in NHL 24. Now, looking at the attributes, everything's great. He's got 90 speed, and his glove low and stick low being 99 is also helpful. A lot of those far side low shots are really what you see going in more often but the real issue here is that he's got gold contortionist which is not a very useful ability in the grand scheme of things whirlwind while it did get a buff again does not activate or nearly enough it is only one ability point energizer has proven to be half decent but they did buff the amount of energy that your goalie retains so it's harder to get into those desperation states you see it less and then light work is in my opinion the best goalie ability currently the real issue that keeps happening with event releases is that they keep releasing power Power up icons as master set player throw in the fact that it is the exact same cost to upgrade these cards it just diminishes the value we're seeing the same players that have been highlighted since the launch of the game get master set players from events that are really the most exciting part of hockey ultimate team when it comes to content throw in the fact that he's got the exact same zone ability however the issue with his power up icon card is that they didn't know the meta goalie abilities at launch of the game and he really doesn't have any good one but regardless he's got 96 speed Speed, so it's very similar and everything's roughly the same across the board i think too often they're going back to the well of using power up icons and because power up icons get a plus one every month it diminishes the value of the master set player being chosen because if you were a fan of dominic Hashik or you really wanted his card you could just go make his power up icon since launch of the game so while i love the card art and i actually like the choice he had an unbelievable style when it comes to his gameplay in real life just not enough here next in the f tier is the 93 ken johnson so again again i understand what they've done with the style icon 3.0 event they went away from the player style outside of the game and more of the flashy moves and deeks and michigans in real life so i can understand the selection of ken johnson because he has scored a lacrosse goal however the issue is that he's had such a bad year he hasn't even been in the nhl all season taking a look at his card he's six foot 175 the 175 is the issue because now more than ever in game you can essentially throw around everyone so a small gust of wind will knock Ken Johnson off the puck. He doesn't have unstoppable force. He does have silver lead edges, which in my opinion is one of the best silver abilities in the game. The other ones are just not worth activating, including six ability points and skilled up, unless you are in the lower divisions and you've gotten total control. Kind of figure it out in terms of the timing for the Michigan, but you really don't see it in division one and two. It's so easy to defend. 95 speed, excel, and agility is all great, and his hand stats at 99 are awesome as well. The biggest issue is that while he is a center, he's got 85 face-offs, meaning that he can't play center at this stage of the game, and then he's going up against the most loaded position that we have in hut and that's left-handed wingers there is no way that he would even crack i mean the top three if you had all of the master set players from this event not including let's say connor mcdavid or rick nash for example so while i get the selection here just this one's an f tier in my opinion next up in the c tier is the 93 andre kuzmenko 5'11, 194 he's got playmaking and sniper forward as well as speed boost agile dangler and shooting boost so speed boost would get his speed up to 96 acceleration to 94 for agility 97 and balance at 93 he can get essentially a max shot with sniper forward activated and his hand stats are almost max as well defensively he's obviously going to be a little bit of a liability he's a smaller player with only 80 body checking gold puck on a string is a fun ability not worth six ability point close quarters is fine as well as is make it snappy and silver lead edges i've talked quite a bit about the reason why he's in the seats here for me is again there's a lot of good right-handed wingers but the real reason is that they released the exact same card for his trade to the calgary flames legitimately the exact same card which again kind of shines light on the new progression system which they just pick and choose but it matches whatever the highest overall is regardless of the event type there are just far better options among right-handed wingers and the fact that you can go out and buy this transaction card for a little bit cheaper just really hurts the master set player in my opinion also in the c tier is the 93 artemi panarin now this is personal experience with every panarin card that i've used again i think at the higher level 
it's very difficult to use cards like this because even though he's six foot, which is fine, it's the 173 pounds because the weight does matter. He just gets knocked off the puck very easily. And in this new version of the game where you run out of energy very quickly and you're hitting and any player can just hit anyone, it makes it even more difficult. 94 speed, 94 excel, and essentially max agility if you can get Agile Dangler Bruce activated. It's got 99 hand stats, a great shot. Gold Elite Edges, which is great. 1T is fun and useful as is Unstoppable Force in tape to tape. So there's really no issues with this card. He is also one of the players that has a custom stride that we talk a lot about. But for me, it just never alleviates the fact that he gets knocked off the puck super easily. I've used Panarin cards every single game for the last four years. And again, might be my experience in Division 1, where it's just that where the game completely changes from what the rest of the player base is used to. I could see him being very effective for players that, you know, really just have games where they're scoring off the rush a ton. But if you are trying to hold on to the puck with him, very difficult. And you're going to need to activate Elite Edges to become a little bit more shifty as well as Unstoppable Force, so there's a lot that goes into making this card useful. And then lastly in the C tier, it's Cole Caulfield. Again, this is in terms of competitive play. 5'8", 175, obviously the smallest of the bunch. However, I do like him a little bit more than the others because of the ability combo he's got. We've seen shooters with 99 shot would make it snappy be effective, like Connor Bedard from the next gen release. He's got 95 speed, excel, and 96 agility, but he can get up to 97 with the speed boost activated. Hand stats are maxed. It's his abilities here. Unstoppable Force, obviously gonna help help out his smaller stature as is elite edges but shrug it off is one of the most underused or released abilities in the game and i think now with the way that truculence and hits absolutely zap your energy shrug it off will help with that it will also stop you from getting those like big hits where you can't get up it only costs one ability point i would love to see shrug it off on every single smaller player because i think it would be a lot more beneficial to be able to make the cards useful so watch out for that i've seen a lot of players especially one that are Montreal Canadiens fans. So if you will play on lower ping and you can use shiftier players a lot easier than others that don't have the same connection, I could, I've could. i definitely seen Cole Coffee build good. Next in the B tier, we've got the 93 Marion Hossa. Honestly, a close to perfect card. Really no holes in the game at 61207. Good size. Can also get checking boost to help out his body checking. Gold Unstoppable Force will allow him to hold on to the puck a little bit more. He's a bigger player. Puck on a string and the silver ability is fun. No contest is okay. And Snipe isn't bad either. Either. I don't really think there's a necessity to activate those. However, 95 speed, excel, agility, and balance with 90 endurance and almost a max wrist shot. Great card. The only reason he's in the B tier for me is that A the other cards that we haven't talked about yet, but also left-handed wing, which he is a pure winger, is just the most stacked position in the game. There's just so many good left-handed wingers. On to the A tier. We've got the 93 Mikhail Sergachev, 6'1", 217. I know a lot of people were asking about Mikhail Sergachev's size. I'm not really sure because I know at the beginning of the year, they did like a relink of the NHL database that the NHL sends them, and there was a lot of height and weight changes. For whatever reason, it's supposed to match NHL.com. NHL.com has Sergachev listed at 6'3". So if he changes to six foot three with gold shut down, he might move into the S tier again because he becomes one of the bigger players. Send it is pointless. Quick pick is very useful and seeing eyes had his usefulness as well. 93 speed, 95 excel. Very, very good card from top to bottom. No complaints here at all. And one of the better left-handed defensemen that you can get that aren't team of the year or fantasy cards. A huge reason why he's in the A tier is because Brian McCabe is also there, but after using him for about 10 to 15 games, there's there's something different about this Brian McCabe card. I almost put him in the S tier, but when I consider that they're going to release more defensemen that are big, and while 95 acceleration and 93 speed isn't bad, and it will last for quite some time, there will probably just be more cards that come out shortly that will replace it, but there's something different about this Brian McCabe card. I think the big benefit is that silver shutdown is all you need, and when you only need four ability points to make this card absolutely nuts, that's a big advantage. This has been one of my favorite cards, and I think when it comes to team context, if you don't need the other cards we're going to talk about in terms of their position, and you really need a left-handed defenseman, let's say you made Larry Robinson and your second line D pair is just fill-ins because you traded in Regeer as well as Willie Mitchell. This is a great second pair defenseman. On to the S tier. We've got the 93 Andre Svechnikov. 6'2", 195, sniper and power forward, as well as speed boost, agile dangler, and shooting boost, which means that at 6'2", 195, he gets up to 90 
95 speed, 95 excel, 95 agility, good balance as well, and a max shot. Hand stats are also max. Body checking's 90. He gets silver truculence just for good measure. And again, skilled up, while I don't think is useful at all at the higher end stage of the game, the real bonus Andrei Svechnikov, like I've talked about all year for the last few games, is the fact that he's got a completely random and goofy skating stride that is different from 99.999% of the rest of the cards or players in the roster. I don't know why, don't ask me how, but again, if you go through every other player, they look exactly like this. 50s across the board, but for whatever reason, someone stumbled into the EA roster office, randomly changed up a card, and then they hit save and sent it out years ago and haven't changed it since. So that is why very few players feel extremely different, but Svechnikov is one of them. And then finally in the S tier, it's the 93 Jack Eichel. This is the best card from this event. At 62207, he's got 94 speed, excel, 93 agility, 95 balance he can go sniper forward as well as shooting boost but the real benefit here is that with defensive boost you can get your face off to 99 overall his wrist shot power and accuracy is almost maxed as well he's got gold unstoppable force which is definitely useful make it snappy magnetic is not going to be usable and silver wheels on jack eichel is also kind of interesting again much like svechnikov jack eichel has this random goofy skating stride that makes him feel different than every other player if you've been using his x factor he's been very good throughout this year so in a landscape where there's just not a ton of great centermen jack eichel remains a great option for you i think the lineup flexibility is what makes him the best card in this event but again i think it's going to be all team contact if you have a team that looks similar to mine like mcdavid arnett mckinnon maybe you've got barzal gretzky as well as rick nash adding eichel is going to be impactful he's probably better than arnett maybe not but very similar so you're bumping down a very very good card however if you just made all of the team builders you probably have a hole on defense which is why i think that mccabe is also a decent option even though i think that svechnikov and eichel might be better mccabe has been so good for me so again team context will matter i hope this helps make your decision when it comes to picking your free master set player or making any of the cards from this event i think there's actually a few options here from this event thank you guys again for watching i'll see you next time have a good one